Well, hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. I just went for a walk. I like to go for a little walk on the treadmill in the morning. Kind of helps me wake up. So a lot of people get those little sebaceous filaments here. They're just, you know, kind of collections of sebum and dead skin cells that are more visibly apparent if you look really, really carefully in people who have oily skin. But gentle cleansing with just a mild cleanser can help dislodge those. A clay mask can also help. A clay mask can also help get rid of those. Um, now, I shared with you guys recently a clay mask I've been trying out um, from Shani Darden. Matter of fact, here's a little brush. Signature Nourishing Facial Mask. Um, so what is it? It's a clay mask. Clays can help remove excess sebum from the skin surface and from within the pore. So for people who have really oily skin, I always suggest you know trying to do a clay mask a couple of times a week to just sort of degrease the skin surface. When you do a clay mask, um, what you might find is that it, it makes it so that when you put sunscreen on your face after you rinse it off, uh, it's less likely to break up and pill, and that can be very inflammatory and can aggravate acne. So this is a great clay mask. It's not drying. It also has squalane in it and emollient to soften and smooth. The product comes with this nice brush to apply it. You're gonna apply it to the skin after cleansing um, to clean skin that's, that's dry. So you don't wanna put any product on. Hang out for about 10 minutes and then it rinses off. And the way I use that is I wash my face with this first and you know, pat dry so there's no like drips on my face. And then I apply it, let it sit on there for 10 minutes and then rinse it off. You don't need a cleanser to take the clay mask off. Yeah, the clay will help absorb some of those little sebaceous filaments and then pull them out and help them rinse away. I'm gonna come in with the aloe 2% NAG 2% solution this morning, trying to make my way through it. But you guys, I repurchased the May Love Fade Away Brightening Serum. So as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna go back to this. This is a 2022 skincare favorite. It's really good for um, brightening your skin, improving skin tone, and it's also super moisturizing. This particular product from The Ordinary hasn't really been doing it for me. But if you have a lot of hyperpigmentation, it, it may help. All right, and then for my sunscreen, I am coming in with the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. Um, I'm gonna film a video for you guys today on my Sephora sale picks, but this is one of my favorite sunscreens from Super Goop, although I have to say the Trader Joe's dupe of this is just as good. But I got this recently. I like how it's clear and colorless. It's very cushiony too. It's very silicone rich, so it has like a poor blurring effect to it. But I mentioned this in my Sephora video, which should be up at this point, that clay mask, the Shawnee Darden one, it's nice, but honestly go for the Cetaphil Derm Control, I think it's called, one, if you are looking for a clay mask and you don't want to show out that kind of coin, because to me, they are very similar. The main difference is that the Shawnee Darden one comes with that, like, pleasant little face brush. But I just, you know, for the Cetaphil one, I just use my fingers because it's basically in a really moisturizing base, so it's not overly drying. Same as the Shawnee Darden one. But, um, like, I don't know. The mask, the putting it on with the brush is not necessary. It's fun, it, you know, it makes it more like you're getting a facial or whatever, but it's definitely not necessary. Um, and the, I would say the textures of the two products are, you know, slightly different. Like the Cetaphil one is more like a very thick cream, whereas the Shawnee Darden one has like almost a whipped consistency to it. Um, but yeah, you know, when it comes to oily skin, the you know products that you use are not going to signal to the oil gland to change its behavior uh but you know products that you use can either feel greasier you know they mix with the oils on your skin and just feel very oily or they can um help you out in that they absorb excess 
oil from the skin surface. But it's all about like a delicate balance too because a lot of products get marketed to people who have oily skin. They tend to be a little bit too aggressively drying. And one thing about, you know, oil versus skin barrier, they're not like, they're not necessarily on the same team. Like you can have your oil glands making a bunch of oil, but then you've got problems with the brick and mortar of your barrier uh, and you're getting dry and irritated. But, and, and then when you're dry and irritated, but your background oiliness, it tends to look even oilier. Um, like for example, people who have seborrheic dermatitis are like the prototype of what it looks like to be oily and have an impaired skin barrier all at once because they will develop patches of redness with overlying flakiness that is covered with this stereotypical oily, greasy scale. Um, and it's it's both, uh, seborrhea, you know, is the medical term for excessive oil production, plus the barrier defect that goes along with seborrheic dermatitis. And um, the skin becomes hyper irritable in those areas. Now, people who have a deeper skin tone they actually lose pigment in the areas where you have seborrheic dermatitis, whether it be on the scalp or on the face. Uh, and it, you know, it freaks them out because they're like, oh my gosh, am I developing vitiligo? Um, you know, when it's happening like around the nose, for example, uh, that's a common area for seborrheic dermatitis to appear. But it's actually seborrheic dermatitis, not vitiligo. And the um, the thing about the hypopigmentation there is that once the sebderm gets under control, the inflammation calms down, the color will go back to normal. Whereas with vitiligo, um, you can reverse vitiligo, but it often, you know, flares. It requires ongoing management uh, to control. Check out my video on vitiligo as a side note. But with vitiligo, what's going on is you have the immune system is attacking the pigment producing cells so that as that immune attack goes on, the pigment producing cells, you know, they go away in those areas. So there's literally no pigment. It turns bone white, porcelain white. There is no pigment in those areas. Whereas with, um, with post-inflammatory hypopigmentation, which is what you're dealing with mostly in, um, you know, seborrheic dermatitis, uh, really it's just all the inflammation is leading to problems with pigment. And it, it can go either way. Uh, you can actually get hyperpigmented seborrheic dermatitis, but in most cases with sebderm, it, it goes the hypo route where you get decrease in pigment. But the melanocytes are not being wiped out. The pigment producing cells, they're not being wiped out. They're just kind of being like, told to quiet down, shut up. <laughs> and that's why you get lightning. Same thing with a lot of children who have eczema, atopic dermatitis, they will develop something called pityriasis alba, where their, their skin barrier is impaired as it relates to atopic dermatitis. And when it flares up, that inflammation suppresses the pigment production. They get these little white patches on their cheeks. Parents freak out, think the child is developing vitiligo, um, you know, and worry that it's gonna spread. But uh, for, it's called pityriasis alba. Uh, it, you know, it's more obvious in deeper skin tones, but uh, as the, you know, with moisturizers and controlling the atopic dermatitis, the color comes back, you know, it's not like a permanent thing. I am here at Miguel's because it is, y'all, <laughs> I am already putting up my Christmas decorations and I'm not even mad because it takes me a while to get them all up. Although I'm about at this point when we're talking, I'm about 40% of the way there. But I think if I push through, I can get to 70%. I know you're thinking, wow, it's early, but like I, I kind of, you know, it takes me a while to get them up. I want to enjoy them. So I am all about having my decor up for the full month of November and December. Uh, so that's what, what we're going with. But the Nutcracker tree, you guys, I can't wait to show it because it is so amazing. Like I am actually 90% through putting together the Nutcracker tree. And you, those of you who have watched my vlogs over the past few years, you're familiar with the Nutcracker tree, but I have, I have kicked it up several notches. Like you are not gonna recognize it. It is so, much more than it has been in year. Like I keep adding to it and this year it's really like 
it's really blossoming and I'm super excited. So I'm here at Michael's because I want to look at the Christmas stuff. But um, yeah, that's what we're doing. Oh, update. Last weekend we went to the library and I got that teddy bear mystery book. I have been loving it. It is completely silly. Uh, it's not like, you know, deep reading, but it is exactly what I needed. I'm almost finished with it. In fact, I was hoping that I would be finished with it at this point, but I got busy last night and didn't end up getting a chance to finish it. I was hoping I'd be finished with it so we could go back to the library, but, um, I have a few more pages, so. Um, yeah, uh, not like a deep read or anything, but it's, it's a perfect escape. And I'm rocking the Sophia jeans from Walmart. And this top is also from Walmart. Looks like they've got mini trees out from Ashland brand. I've heard that the flocked trees are a nightmare to deal with. That gets all over everything. So I've always steered clear of the flocked trees. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm kind of tempted to get this massive nutcracker. I don't know what has gotten into me. I'm really going... Like, I really just want to go overboard with Christmas decorating. Look how cute. They also have these little signs. The gingerbread people. Little mini stockings. Now, oh, speaking of Nutcracker, little mug. These are on sale for $6.99. Look at the little Santa one. He's sweet. Oh, isn't that something? It's like a little Ferris wheel with presents. Oh yes, this is what I'm talking about. My Christmas tree in the living room is always like peppermint themed. I kind of want some holiday pillows for my um, chairs, but I always like to get the, I always like to get the, um, slip covers more nutcrackers over here oh they have a little glittery fob there it's a little jolly santa i'm looking for light up snow globes that's like my latest thing I'm all about Ooh. no sooner did i mention one and I found a nutcracker one. Oh, they really have quite the tree selection. I love this little pink one. If I ever want to do another nutcracker tree, then I think I'll get a little pink one. But I'm telling you, go with an all white tree. I have loved mine. I have a big one which you'll see that I put in the living room and then I have a little one that I do the nutcracker tree with. But I just find that they're such a good base because they really pop, you know, and the ornaments really show up well, as do the lights. Speaking of ornaments, they have, oh, that's fun. I have quite the selection here. I love these blown these glass ornaments whatever they're called is that blown glass i don't know but i like the company old old christmas old world christmas or listen to me i don't even know what it is i like i know it when i see it but they had a ton of it at that store we went in last weekend christmas rocks he's sweet look at him oh look at these for jazzing up your mantle i like these snowflakes except i wish they would are they uh, their own color oh they're musical too that's festive these are on sale 14.99 originally 19.99 3.99 for the ashland candles they have quite a selection of jumbo bows these always make good tree toppers. That's what I have on my main tree. I have a big bow as a topper. I have a little gingerbread houses. Here's some nice tree toppers. I like the snowflake. Now I'm kind of tempted to get a teeny tiny little mini tree and get like these little itty bitty ornaments. 
little wreaths are sweet. Oh, oh my gosh. Little mini plate of cookies. But these little houses you can paint. There's a Santa's workshop. Oh, and they light up. And look how sweet this one is. $10. Coffee shop. Oh, look at the little stable. There's a ski lodge. I'd love to have like a massive Christmas village with a train going through it. That would be so cool. There's like a YouTube video um, of this like Christmas train village in someone's home like it's it's a whole big room and the level of detail is so impressive can't remember what that channel was called i stumbled upon this video like i think last christmas oh, every time i come down this aisle i get tempted to go back to my sculpey and femo days i was really into making these like clay beads <laughs> speaking of little village this one's like very loud pet kingdom waffle maker. I always get tempted by those things. Now they have a little mini bunt cake maker. That's fun. I don't need these. I have some that I like that I'm going to put out. <laughs> Almost fell off of my bamboo bath mat. Hey guys, I am all out of the shower, freshly moisturized. I just came on with the, here it is, the Centella Pro Bio Sika, and over that I have got the Cetaphil, oops, my foot cream just jumped. Y'all, I have way too much going on here. The Cetaphil Age Renew Night Cream. This is moving into the colder months. If you want something real thick, tap into this. I've been super impressed by it. I mean, that consistency is lovely. Um, this, but if you want more of a lightweight gel, I'm gonna do a comparison here. You just saw how thick and juicy that is. The Aveeno Calm and Restore Oat Gel Moisturizer. Please, please, please never, ever, ever discontinue this. This is a gel consistency. When you put it on, the nice thing about gel moisturizers, gel creams, is you, you almost, as soon as they touch your stratum corneum, at least for me, you all, it's almost like, it's almost like you feel a little water trickling on in. Um, whereas when you get something that's real thick and rich, like that Cetaphil one, you almost feel like you almost feel like there's a there's a like soothing pat, a soothing pat on the back there, reducing transepidermal water loss. They're totally different like neurosensory experiences for me. But at the end of the day, they're all going to help reduce the water loss and help your barrier. But it's all about like what textures, consistencies, and ingredient profiles you like and that suit your needs. Now, 
the the Aveeno one, you know, it's got oats, which are underrated, great skin protectant, um, full of antioxidants, anti-inflammatory compounds. Um, the Aveeno one also has centella. The Cetaphil um, has botanic derived purified peptides that can hydrate. Now moving into the colder months, moisturizer can really help you out a lot because our skin tends to lose a lot more water once the heaters come on and also you know if you walk out in the cold you get cold winter winds or even fall crisp air, a blustery, what am I, Winnie the Pooh, a blustery day. Um, it can really dry out and irritate your skin. So having moisturizer helps to replenish that and aids in barrier recovery. Now I'm looking for, y'all, I'm not gonna come in tonight with that red kinesthetic bonding concentrate because it's just not, it's just not making me happy. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the Orbe Gold Lush, Gold Lush, Gold Lust Nourishing Hair Oil. This is basically a silicone, anti-frizz luster adder, if you will. Um, I just like to put a couple of pumps on my ends. I just get the little travel size because it is expensive and you don't end up needing to use much and I don't use it every day. Anyway, y'all, I hope this video was fun and exciting. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the vlog. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.